everybody. Welcome to Banjo Band, Clark.com. Bum -ba -dum. You know, I am Banjo Band. I'm your host here on the website to teach you how to play banjo, guitar, and mandolin. What was cool about that lick that I just played to start off the video is that it was completely reverse roll based, okay, or backwards roll based. And a lot of the questions that I get from Gold Pit members on the site is the trouble that they have with their reverse rolls. And there's something about it that just physiologically might be tough for some folks to do. Well, I'm, I'm about to fix that. So we've got a, a good lesson here working on reverse rolls, and we're going to dispel some myths about re what reverse rolls aren't and what they are, and then I've got an incredible exercise that I want you to work through. And here's my promise to you. If you have trouble with reverse rolls, once you work through my exercise with me and work through the downloadable rhythm MP3 tracks that I have for you as Gold Peak members, um, your reverse rolls will be much, much smoother, much faster. So I invite you to dive in with me. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube here in a moment, I'll ask you to come over to my favorite website, BanjoBenClark.com. You can join as a Gold Pick member, have access to hundreds of videos on banjo, mandolin, and guitar. Not only that, as a member, you're able to download all the tabs and the rhythm MP3 tracks. So I have the tab for this great exercise. We're going to learn boil them cabbage down using different variations of our reverse roll. Then I have three different rhythm track um, MP3s for you to download. So let's jump into reverse rolls. This lesson is all about backwards or reverse rolls. They're both the same thing. And I, and I would advise you, actually, it's imperative that you watch my general roll overview lesson and then also our study on forward rolls because there's, there's some things that I may skip here just for the sake of um, avoiding duplicity there, okay? But let's talk about what a reverse roll is. Well, most folks would think about a reverse roll as starting with our middle finger and then playing our index finger and then playing our thumb on any of the five strings. And indeed, that is a reverse roll. But it's important to know that reverse rolls don't have to start with our middle finger. They often do. But as long as we're going in that reverse motion, they can start with any finger, and I would consider it a reverse or backwards roll. So if we we're going to do a backwards roll starting with our index finger, that would mean that we would need to go to our thumb next, then our middle. There's a complete reverse roll starting with our index. No matter which string we play. In the same way, we could do a reverse or backwards roll starting with our thumb. Where would we go next? Well, we would go to our, end or our middle and then to our index. So we're still going in a reverse pattern. We're starting it with a thumb. So a forward roll starting with a thumb would look like this. A reverse. Okay, so we shouldn't get it stuck in our head that a reverse roll has to start with our middle finger. Now, since you have watched my forward roll video, you know that these rolls, the forward and the reverse roll, um, are made up of three notes. Okay, so whenever we're playing in a song that has um, four beats in each measure, that means that we're going to end up having to play a partial roll at the end. It doesn't work out mathematically. I explain that very well over on the forward roll video. So I won't do that here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom cabbage down. We're going to take that basic chord progression and we're going to practice playing through it starting with each of our three fingers. So this is really more of an exercise for reverse rolls uh, than it is actually learning um, the song, if I was going to choose to just play this song, I would probably play it more out of a forward roll pattern. But it's so good to do it with our reverse rolls since it can be more difficult for some people. So let's start first with our index finger to do these reverse rolls. Let's, we'll throw the first line of tab up there. We're going to start with our index first um, because that's where the melody note lies for this particular song, this particular arrangement. Um, and so our index is always going to be playing the melody. So I thought that we'd start with our index there. You'll notice that beneath each one of the notes that I have written out, there's little numbers and a letter in circles. And those are our fingerings, okay? Our finger indications. So a, a one with a circle around it means that we play with our index. A two would mean middle. A T with a circle around it would be thumb. Okay, so the first measure is going to be made up of two complete reverse rolls or backwards rolls 
and then two extra notes. So it sounds like this. Okay, so we have a full reverse roll stern with our index finger to start it off. There's one roll, then we do another one. Then we have to do a partial to end the measure. Okay, so for measure two, we're gonna to go to that partial C chord that we've already learned. Okay, so first fret on the B string, second string, and then we're gonna play our second fret on the first string. And we're going to start back over with our index. This is the important part. We start back over with our index and do the same pattern with our picking hand. We're just going to place down the partial chord. So measure two sounds like this. If I'm going too fast for you, don't forget that I have a whole other video where I play the whole thing through very, very slowly, as well as the MP3 rhythm tracks. Now in measure three, we go back to a G chord. And then for measure four, our pattern is going to remain the same with our picking fingers, but the strings are gonna change. This time, we're going to start on the third string instead of the second with our index finger. And this D7 chord has a second fret down on the G string and a first fret down on the second string, the B string. Even though we don't play that string, we're gonna place it down anyway. So measure four sounds like this. So let me just pl slowly play measures one through four. You'll hear what it sounds like when we do reverse rolls starting with our index finger and I'll play it slower later on. As we get into the second line, I'm out of tune. There we go. When we get to the second line, we're going to have some repeating going on. But there's something very important that happens in measure seven that I want to look at. But measure five and measure six is exactly like measures one and two. We've already learned them. But in measure seven, we have a split measure, meaning that the chord changes halfway through the measure. So how are we gonna handle that? Well, we're still gonna keep our reverse rolls going, but we're going to have to, halfway through the measure, place our D7 chord position down, okay? And then we're going to have to switch which string our index finger plays. So measure seven slowly, we start off with our second string with our index. We do a backwards roll, then we're going to do another backwards roll, and then we're gonna place down our D7 and play that partial backwards roll. So measure seven slowly, sounds like this. And then measure eight, we're just gonna wrap it up with some quarter notes. So a quarter note on the G string, pinch. Quarter note on the second string, B string, pinch. Now what I wanna do is we're gonna do the same type of exercise. This time we're going to start with our thumb. And you say, well, why is this important, Ben? It's because it's going to ingrain in your head that you don't always have to start a backwards roll or reverse roll with a certain finger. And it's gonna work out different parts of your brain and different parts of your hands. Let's check that out now. <laughs> 